Boss Lady behind Bella's Custom Crochets, and this is episode 17 of my mostly crochet podcast. There's a little bit of knitting in here, and we have a giveaway today, so that's okay. Um, but yeah, um, welcome. I know I have a lot of new viewers, subscribers. I know a lot of you came over from Natalie's channel from the last episode where we did the um, collaboration together, so I'll make sure I'll link that as well if you missed that. But if you are here for the first or second time, welcome. Thank you for coming, and if you've been here all along with me, I appreciate you sticking it out. We are now over 1K. I think we're at like 1,200 or something at this point. Um, it's Tuesday, August, something, something, 25th, whatever, doesn't matter. You're seeing it on the Friday. Um, but yeah, it is August of 2020, and we just cleared the 1K mark on YouTube, and that's super exciting, so there is going to be a giveaway. I have lots of local Connecticut, where I'm from, um, maker goodness that I'm going to be sending your way, somebody's way. So let's get down to business. I have all of the things to talk about. So I'm not going to do the giveaway until later on, but make sure you stick around for that. And if you're not subscribed, make sure that that's something that you do, because that's going to be a prerequisite, if you will, for the giveaway. Um, and also, I will make sure that I have everything that I've talked about today. Um, in We're doing show notes on the blog now, so there'll be a link to a blog post down below with all of the links to the makers and the shops and the patterns and all of the things. Let's get down to the making. What have I been up to? Forgotten Lore Shawl, it's upstairs, I took pictures of it yesterday, is in tech editing right now, so I'm hoping that I'm gonna have that out. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna try for Labor Day, actually. I usually do pattern releases on Fridays, but I'm gonna try for a Monday and see if that's different. Um, so that's gonna be coming out early September. I'll let you know for sure. There'll be a pattern drop video and all of that. Put in a picture. If you don't know what the Forgotten Lore Shawl looks like, these are my put it in a picture hands. Um, I'm very excited about that design, uh, so that'll be coming at you next. And yeah, that's really the only admin -y thing that I have. Still waiting on yarn from a designer. Mailing is complicated in 2020 um, to do a sweater design for the fall, so that's coming up next. And I'm gonna talk about another design in a little bit when we get into the yarny stuff. sipping on some Earl Grey. If you can hear nature noises, I have the window open. My office is the only room in our house that is not having its own personal air conditioner. And we have the door shut to keep out the family noise. So it's muggy in here. There was a cricket living its best life a while ago. So we'll see how we do noise-wise, but you know, real life is. Let's talk about finished objects. All right, this I showed you last time and it was technically finished, but I hadn't sewn in the ends or taken pictures or anything. Um, this is the Dove Dress by made by Haley Bailey, Haley Bailey of made by Haley Bailey. It is really too much to show you on screen here, but it is a tunic length, bell sleeve, make your own adventure, fits any size pattern. I've talked about it a lot in the last couple of episodes, so I will um, direct you there if you'd like more, but I'm gonna put in, oh, I have a snaggle. <laughs> we'll put in pictures of me wearing it. Finally put it on yesterday, it's been in the 90s still and very muggy, but I needed to get pictures done for Haley. So put it on yesterday and as promised, I pirated, pirated it, pirated it up. Got out the pirate sword. Um, I was gonna do full pirate garb, boots and everything, but most of that was packed in my attic and it just was too sweaty. So we threw on some leggings and a belt and a sword and it was piratey enough, I promise. So that, um, I don't know that I'll be wearing it dressed as a pirate in, real life applications. Does that annoy you over there? Of course I picked the ugliest hanger too. Um, yeah, I don't know that I'm going to be dressing as a pirate and going anywhere anytime soon, but um, I think I might wear it with the belt in the fall. Not sure. Belting things isn't cool anymore, right? Nobody belts things. I used to belt all of the things. And my husband and I, I think we were dating. Um, he was like, why, why do you need a belt? on your rib cage. What is it what is it holding in? What is it keeping up? <laughs> like we wear dresses all the time with like a high waisted belt. Yeah, I don't think that's a thing anymore. Um, but I whipped out the belt for that because I talked about it last time. It's a little too big. Um, my own fault because it's a make whatever size you want pattern and I made it too big for myself. Um, so it has a little extra positive ease in it and 
I think it's still cute. All of the testers in the group assured me it was cute. Tell me if it's not cute, Gus. <laughs> I felt like the top should maybe be more fitted and then like all the flowy bits be flowy. Um, the flaps, as Haley's been calling them, flaunt those flaps. Um, but yeah, I think, it's, I think it's cute, even without the belt. I'm not sure, but I do like it. It does fit, pattern's great. Send in my notes and my pictures this week and I think she said it's coming out September 10th-ish. So be on the lookout, it's a make any size you want, plug in your measurements, adult, baby, dog, whatever. I, mean, I don't really know that you could make one for a dog, but you could sure try. So that is my first finished object. What else do we have? We have socks, knitted socks. I'm just gonna mix the crochet and knit content. Like I said at the beginning, this is mostly a crochet podcast, but I do um, knit as well for hobby. I talked about myself more in the, this is my, so distracting, I feel like Elrond. <sighs> I'm getting my hair cut like next week because there's too much of it. But for right now, I'm just being, you know, an elven pirate, whatever. Um, I talked about myself and who I am and what I do mostly in the last episode with um, the collaboration with Natalie. So if you want a little more detail on who I am and why I'm here talking to you, again, jump on over to that one. But mostly I'm a crochet designer by trade. Um, previously have sold finished crocheted goods, kind of moving away from that. Um, and then I just knit as hobby because it's nice to have something that's not part of my job as well. So yeah, sip tea. Last time I had one of these finished, what was the first one? They don't match. This was the first one. So this was Sock Week 2020. Um, a week or so, I've lost track of time because 2020 has been rough, y'all. Um, but a week or so ago, again, Natalie of Knitty Natty did a knit one sock in a week challenge. And I did my first pair of scrappy socks. So these are all just left over from other projects. And then I completed, I think in Sock Week, I got down to like here, I think this green stripe was where I was. So I have like, one, I had like one in, actually, no, I think it was at like this green stripe. I don't remember. There's a picture on my Instagram feed somewhere. Um, but I was like so close to being done with two socks, but I was like, I could have two socks or I could still have functional wrists. I picked, picked the functional wrists and they were only like mostly functional. So yeah, I get a little obsessive, addictive personality. Um, but yeah, I now have two completely scrappy they're the same yarns, but they're obviously not in the same pattern, uh, and I love them. Funnily enough, the cuffs are the same yarn. It's my own hand dye that I dyed with excess um, Wilton food dye that had leaked out into my, so I used to do cake decorating, it leaked into my like storage container, so I just like mixed all the blues and purples together. And somehow those cuffs are two totally completely different colors, but it's the same yarn. I'm not a professional dyer. Crazy. Um, but yeah, I, I love them. They're just really fun. I had to sew in a million, you can kind of see the seam. I followed the Crazy Sock Ladies tutorial for sewing in, um, not that you really need a tutorial for sewing in ends, but she has one for how she sews in her sock ends. And you can kind of see like, you know, there's a little bit of a lump or a, there's obviously a jog. And yeah, on the inside it's just not, I'm not pulling it all off, but it's not as pretty on the inside. And I made sure my seams were running along the side and not the bottom of my foot, because that would be annoying. Um, but I found yesterday after having completed this sock and then one other scrappy sock, this pair of socks, um, Mars of Hey Brownberry has a jogless don't sew in any ends tutorial where she like weaves in the end kind of as she goes. And I've never done that with knitting. I've done it with crocheting. I never even thought about doing it with knitting. Um, it doesn't work great in crochet, but it seems like it would work better in knitting. Um, so yeah, her, her socks were totally scrappy and had no ends to sew in at the end and there was no jog from where like because you're knitting in the round where it doesn't line up so in the future i think i might uh, refer to mars's tutorial because that seems really helpful but love these socks um basic vanilla sock i think sometimes i do 60 sometimes i do 64 i think these were 64 stitches u.s size ones always forget the millimeter ridge because america um and yeah i did 70 i think rows for the leg, wrist, wrist, ankle, cuff, whatever, this leg bit. Um, I did slip stitch garter heels for the first time. I don't know if I love them. They're really squishy, but they kind of look weird. And 65, I think, rows for the foot. And then the standard toe that I never remember the name of, but it's in all the patterns. So yeah, 
made those, happy with them, and I'm going to, I need to get them posted this week so I can enter them also into Kay's Sock Camp, Summer Sock Camp 2020, because I have a finished pair of socks. So those are my summer socks. I'm excited to wear those in the fall. I really like Scrappy. I really liked not having to make anything match up other than just like the row count. Although it's kind of nice when you do Scrappy and you can count like every 10 rows you do a stripe or something. For this I still had to use stitch markers and count, but overall, really fun. That's my first finished, finished object because the sweater was technically done before. I have one more knit finished object. This is the Topaz cardigan by the Velvet Acorn. Um, it is a knit, I believe it runs like size six months through adult maybe. Um, but I made the size, I didn't gauge and I kind of was winging it on some bits and I definitely modified some stuff. But mostly I followed the pattern for the Topaz cardigan by the Velvet Acorn. Um, and I made, I think the size four, but it, my gauge was a little smaller. So it's probably closer to a large size two. Not that that matters to you, but my daughter will be two in the fall, but she's very tall. So I wanted to have some room to grow. Um, this is yarn that I dyed with avocado skins and pits. Tutorial coming soon. Now that the sweater's done, I have to put the tutorial together. It fits her really cute. Um, I haven't taken any pictures of it yet, but if I can convince her to put it back on in the sweaty weather, we'll maybe drop a picture in. If not, it's cute. You can see it. Imagine a cute child wearing it. Um, <laughs> the things that I changed, what did I change? I was two, holding two strands of fingering together. I think it's normally a DK weight pattern. So I was holding my two strands, I don't know if you can tell, but the dye lots, or the, the dye was slightly different, so it kind of has a heathered, mar not marled, heathered maybe? Slight variation tonally thing going on that I really love. I think I added a row of this garter ridge, I think there was originally four, but I feel like you should always do things in odd numbers. Floral design, cake decorating, all that, odd numbers. Um, and then I changed, there was like more of these garter ridges on the sleeve, just did one, and then garter cuff. What else did I change? Um, I added the I-cord. Can you do I-cord backwards? Because I'm pretty sure I may have done the I-cord on the wrong side. Because it was supposed to have this garter edge, but it was kind of rolling and not laying flat. So I was like, oh, I'll add an I-cord. But I think I picked up the stitches. What did I do? Because the pattern called for a um, I-cord tie at the top. So I was like, I need to work up from the bottom and then make the tie off of it. So I wanted to do it kind of seamlessly. Um, so I picked up the stitches and then I knit the I cord applied and then did this other I cord coming off of it. But I feel like maybe, did I do it on the wrong? I don't know, can you tell? Is that the right side of the I cord? I feel like that might be the right side. And that might be the wrong side. Whatever, my toddler doesn't care. Um, but yeah, comment below, did I do the I cord wrong? <laughs> I don't know. And then I was going to just keep I cording everything because I like a nice finished edge, but I ended up crocheting, single crocheting around the top edge. I, was, I really don't like garter. I feel like my garter, I don't know if it's just me, um, but I feel like I just, garter edges look really sloppy when I do them. No idea why, because my stitches are very, I mean, not very, but fairly uniform when I'm doing stockinette. But as soon as you ask me to just knit, it gets wonky. Like I just feel like that looks like a mess. I remember the first thing I knit was like a garter, supposed to be a baby blanket, but it was like a garter, it was purple tweed, so a blanket for my cat. And that's just what it reminds me of. Every time I knit garter, I'm like, mm, it looks terrible. So anyway, I crocheted around the bottom edge, single crochet, because that was just easier than I cording again. And then, yeah. I wasn't completely sure on the tie, but I think it's cute, right? And I made it a little longer and it just, it fits her really well. It looks really good. And I only messed it up a little bit. Like right here, I totally neglected to do the garter edge. <laughs> Whatever. It's okay. She doesn't mind. And it's only going to fit her for a couple months anyway, because she's the growing machine. So that is my Topaz cardigan. Like the pattern, I don't think there was anything I didn't understand or like about it. It's actually the first time I've made in velvet acorn pattern, but I have like a bazillion in my queue and favorites. So that is that. You'll see it again soon in the, this is the handy dandy hanging situation. See you again soon in the uh, avocado tutorial that I keep promising you that it's coming. It's coming. So I think that's it for finished objects. I have a half finished object. I never really know what section to put that in. But since it's the same yarn, we can talk about it. Guys, I made a tiny sock. 
So left over after the cardigan, we had some pink left, and after the scrappy socks, look at how tiny that is compared to that. Um, we had some scrappy bits left. So I was like, I'm going to make a tiny sock, as my daughter calls it, tiny sock. Um, so yeah, I made a tiny little sock. Um, I looked up, didn't follow a pattern, but I looked at the Rye Light socks from Tin Can Knits and a pattern called like Basic Toddler Sock or something by Pearl Soho, both free, um, and a couple other free toddler sock patterns on Ravelry. Um, I feel like toddler socks just always kind of look wonky and a lot of times I feel like they're not fingering weight yarn patterns that I found. Um, but I looked at the numbers, yeah, just to get the cast on numbers because I had no idea how many to do. So I think I settled on 44 stitches um, cast it on. Then I decided I actually wanted 48. So by the time I got to the foot and was doing the gusset, I stopped decreasing when I got to 48. This was supposed to be a size like two, three, but my gauge was smaller. Again, do I gauge for socks? I do not. Um, and I was just looking at like vanilla sock patterns. I ended up doing some ribbing. So it's a two by two rib at the top, twisted, twisted rib at the top, and then a three by one um, for the body of the sock just because I feel like I wanted it to stay on. So it is, it fits her. Um, I don't know how long it will fit her for. The foot definitely has room to grow, but this 44 stitch part is definitely a little snuggly, but it goes on and I feel like it's super washed, so it's gonna be fine. Um, I, I didn't have sock blockers, so I was trying to block it around a rolling pin yesterday. <laughs> kind of worked, it's still sort of damp. Um, but yeah, I have to sew in all the ends, they're all in there. And I cast on, I'm like a row and a half into the second sock. But I made this in like a day and a half. It's itty bitty and adorable. Slip stitch heel, same toe, just a tiny sock. And she just like kept asking to try it on. She pulled the needles out like multiple times, but uh, kept asking to try it on. Oh, tiny sock. Um, so she's really excited about it because I'm usually making socks for myself and she'd be like, mama's sock? No. <laughs> yeah, so she's very happy to have a tiny sock. Kind of impractical. I really feel for the mothers of days of old who actually had to knit for their children, like, so their children wouldn't be naked and cold. Because I just do it, like, so she'd be extra cute. But, yeah, if I actually had to knit my kids' socks all the time, that would be a lot. Um, because she grows a lot and wears things out a lot. Um, so, my heart goes out to the mothers of the days of old. How did you have time? You were, like, washing your laundry by hand and growing potatoes and stuff. Okay, this is not what this podcast is about. Tiny sock, big sock. Scrappy, fun. Um, anything else I need to tell you? The big stripes are 10 rows. The pink stripes are five rows. So there's... Hi, husband! Oh, are you filming? Yes, yes I am. Oh. Can I help you? Why didn't you tell me? Uh, that was the premise of what I was doing today. I was taking my postal scale. Just give me a second here. Technically, it's postal scale. I can get away with three ounces. You can get away with three ounces. Goodbye. Okay, bye. <laughs> okay. That was my husband, Jojo. He edits all the videos. He's probably taking that out. So that is my half-finished object. We can move into the whips section, I suppose. There was a very loud airplane outside. Funny thing about airplanes, I haven't noticed the sound of airplanes in, I don't know, 26 years, 25 years, I don't know, long time. You just kind of zone out airplanes, but now that my daughter is into airplanes, I hear every airplane, because she's like, airplane, helicopter. Yeah, I now I have superhero senses that hear airplanes. And that one's really loud. Lockdown blanket, we'll show you. We're sick of it. I'm so, so done with this project. <laughs> I am stubborn and I'm gonna finish it, dang it. Um, yeah, what did I add? I added some yellow, I added some green. And then I'm trying to figure out the edge that I messed up. Because it was like one off. And I've decided there's just gonna be some, because it's supposed to be by week. Each day is a day of lockdown. So I always like doing rainbow order, seven hexes of the same color. I'm supposed to be keeping track of lockdown, but whatever, lockdown goes forever. So who really knows how many days anymore? I'm not even counting. I'm just making hexagons. 
Um, but yeah, I messed up an edge back here. So now there's some days that are going to have, or some weeks that are going to have eight days in them because 2020, really, that's kind of how it feels. Um, so I had to fix this edge. So I added in a green because the edge was wrong. And then I think I added in, there's a eight day yellow week as well. So I'm trying to get this edge back on track. But I need, I don't have any more of this maroon or this pink. Um, so I don't know what I'm doing with this bit here that I need to fix. <sighs> Lockdown blanket, man. It seemed like a good idea back in March when we thought lockdown was going to be like, you know, a month at most. <laughs> so funny. It's getting, it's probably three quarters of the way over half to twin size bed. Once it gets to twin size bed size, twin size bed size, uh, we're probably going to find a cut off there and come up with another lockdown type project maybe. Or maybe not. I just feel like I want my grandchildren to hear the story how their grandmother made this rainbow lockdown blanket. This is my legacy. <laughs> this awkward worsted weight acrylic. Yeah, I can do better. Okay. What else am I working on? This is the only other whip slash design slash project at the time. At this time. All right, so we have rainbow minis. They smell so wooly. From, they're from Maruma, I think is how you say it, Maruma Yarns on Etsy, but I believe she is a reseller or a wholesaler or something because her shop is full of like notions and other yarn brands, but then she also hand dyes, so I'm kind of confused. From Latvia, um, so ordered these from Latvia back in like February, thinking that I was going to do a fall cowl design with them, and I still am, um, but I think what I had in my mind may or may not be translating into yarn, so I need you to let me know your thoughts on this. But yeah, so I have rainbow colors and then I have grays. Um, and when I posted a picture yesterday, I totally posted uh, the yarns in rainbow color incorrectly, which is so unlike me. 2020 has broken me, y'all. It has broken me. I no longer know how to put things in rainbow order. Who even am I? But the thought was that I was going to be doing a marled cowl with this, um, marling the grays and with the rainbows to kind of settle down the rainbows. Um, and I wanted to use herringbone single crochet, um, which is different than herringbone half double crochet, completely different stitches. And it's a little fiddly and it took me like a day and a half to like wrap my mind around it, watching multiple videos and I kept doing it wrong and I still kind of keep messing it up, but I think I'm getting closer. Um, so this is my first swatch. Look, look how uneven and weird the swatches. Um, I don't think I like this hook size. I think it's too dense, but my, my thought my issue, I definitely want to hold the yarns double because I don't want to do a fingering weight herringbone cowl. I feel like that's going to be too tedious. Um, but I can't decide if I like the marling. Like, is it detracting from the herringbone? The herringbones. So I don't know if I, I don't like this hook size, but I wanted to show you. But this one's better. Like, can you see the herringbone bits? I can't decide. So the thought for the cowl is that it's going to be rainbow order, marled with gray, and then like a ribbing on the top and bottom. Um, and I was trying out one more hook size because I can't decide if this is too dense or not. It's a very dense stitch and it's a little bit fiddly, but once you get it down, it's just a two row repeat and the second row is weird. The first row is completely doable. Second row, you're like working backwards. But once you do it a couple times, you get it down. Um, and there'll be, of course, if it's my pattern, I'll do a tutorial and pictures and all of that to help y'all out. But I really like this stitch because it mimics knit herringbone. I'm trying to like capture the herringboniness of it. You can see it, right? I don't want it to be like too wild and I can't decide if it's too much with the marling. Is it too much with the marling? Say no. Say you love it. Because I'm looking to do mini skein projects for the fall and winter because um, I know a lot of people do advent calendars and a lot of people are just like really into minis right now. So I'm trying to put some mini patterns out there. This is the back side of the stitch. It looks totally different and ugly. But the front side is so lovely. And I don't want to do it solid colors because then it's going to be so color blocky and weird and the color's changing when I'm holding that up. So this might reincarnate as something else but I'm, I'm gonna try and stubborn my way through it and make the cowl and see if I like it so these aren't blocked or anything and I'm still trying to figure out which hook size and math and all that like so you can see the herringbone right from a distance
distance, it looks cool. Who's gonna be up close to you like this on your cowl? No one. It's gonna go this way though. Oh, I feel like you can see it better that way. Maybe I should move the cowl that way. Thoughts, everybody? It's mounted on the sole of my neck. Help me, help me help you. Do you want this cowl? <laughs> up and down is kind of cool. Then it would be rainbow going that way instead of this way. Design process, it's really fun, guys. <laughs> it is though. It's just frustrating when you think something is gonna look spectacular in your mind and then you make it and you're like, oh no, no. <laughs> So we'll see. That's the nameless cowl project that is happening once I get the Forgotten Lore Shawl launched. And yeah, waiting on the yarn for the sweater. It's lovely. It's gray. It's coming. And then, yes, we're working on that. I think that's everything that I have. I'm looking at my notes for whips and finished objects and all of that. So I think that means we can get into giveaway stuff. So again, thank you um, if you have subscribed um, already. I appreciate you being here. I appreciate hitting 1K is if you don't know where basically um, you cross over the threshold into being able to make money on YouTube. It starts small, but it's a big step. Um, and this is something that I am trying to really get into. Um, not as like my main income, but uh, as somebody who's doing crochet as a living, it's important to have some different um, revenue streams. Is that the right term? You kind of have to diversify because it's really hard to make unless you're a really big time, make all of your money straight up off patterns. So the blog and YouTube are a huge part of what I do. And as of prior to right now, none of them have been making money. So it'll be really awesome to be, I don't want to say benefiting because I, I do love doing it. It's a lot of fun, but it'll be really cool to be making some money off of it as well. So thank you for being part of that and supporting me in my design maker mama boss lady realm. So the giveaway, um, like I said, you're gonna have to be a subscriber and I'll tell you what else you have to do after I show you the things. But these are all from local Connecticut. I am from Connecticut as we have established. A couple of my favorite local Connecticut makers. Um, I reached out, oh, there's a tiny bit in here from Hobby Lobby that's not local at all, but mainly we're looking at stuff. What happened to the little, oh, it's in there, okay. Hang on, I'm trying to get all my doodads organized for you. Don't need that. Let's go together. Okay. Okay, okay. All from Connecticut Makers, all people that I have worked with and have met personally. Um, I haven't met every single one of them. Majority, I have met, interacted with, purchased their stuff, used their stuff, loved their stuff. So these are people I stand by. Um, and yeah, I'm just gonna show you what everybody sent or. So it's not gonna be, you have to go follow these people, um, like an Instagram giveaway, but if you want to, that would be awesome. And I would really appreciate if you check out their shops and consider supporting them, cause I love supporting local people. And yeah, these are, these are my folks. So I'm gonna make sure in the show notes that you're linked to all of their important stuff. And you can go get some of it for yourself, whether or not you win. First up, we have, um, are you gonna focus? Sassy Black Yarns, um, a t-shirt is very local to me and she just started dying the beginning of this year so she is a new to the scene indie dyer this is her colorway um, Monday's attitude this is a fingering weight yarn it's 75 percent superwash merino wool and 25 percent nylon and 437 yards per 100 grams four ply fingering weight sock yarn so it's got these purples and browns and all the goodness in there and yeah, everything that you're gonna see is one big prize package going to one, one lucky viewer like you. So that is the first bit. Um, and then having sent this picture to Erin of Cup of Tea Yarns, she sent over this skein that kind of coordinates. And they're really similar. Uh, this one's a little bit yes, less yards. This is 393 yards um, on her high twist sock base, which is incredible. I really wanna get some of this. Really, really soft. Um, called Sad Songs, and it's a Superwash Merino 85-15 nylon, which is not a base I've worked with, and I love it. Um, so it's a, a cream base. Erin um, is a natural dyer, so the purples and the browns that you're seeing here are um, achieved, and they're kind of all hidden in there, but it's got little pops that match beautifully with this one. See, that looks really pretty. Um, she dyes all with natural 
plants and etc and etc so Erin from cup of tea yarns sent this one they're both fingering weight and yeah I wanted to make it accessible to both crocheters and knitters because I know a lot of you are probably knitters um, or both so I'm not um, putting a pattern in mind with these two but who doesn't need lovely purple yarn in their stash and I would love if you win if you tag me and tell me what you're gonna make with it um, up next we have a Robin from Within Creative. These aren't specifically for crocheters or knitters, um, but she makes notion pouches. She makes pouches and she sells them as um, pencil pouches, makeup pouches, pouches on her Etsy shop. So it's again kind of matches. Okay, we got a purple cream theme going on and then purple and white inside. It's got a purple zipper and these are pur perfect said purple too many times perfect for double pointed needles crochet hooks um, your little snips tiny measuring tape you know you know what notions are you do this stuff um, so this is these I have one of these in like all of my project bags and I don't have a lot of projects going so it's not a ton I'm not a lot of whips kind of person but um, anytime I do have a bag I have one of these my daughters figured out how to open them so now there's like needles and scissors all over the place and I get in trouble for leaving them out so yeah within creative Robin and she also sent over two others that aren't gonna be in this giveaway but in future giveaways we have two other lovely pouches as well so thank you Robin for excess that was really sweet so you're gonna get that you're gonna get the two yarns but wait there's more if you've been here for any length of time you've heard me talk about block 21 prints did my t-shirt did half the things you're seeing in the background and a lot a lot of things block 21 prints Sarah um, is probably my favorite maker she does lino cut um, stamps so she carves linoleum stamps it onto t-shirts and fabrics um, so she carved this with her hands something the fact that she carves fonts is incredible to me so she carves it stamps it onto bags shirts fabric things all sizes men's women's all that um, and then she takes the um, stamped prints and has them digitally digitally converts them and colors them in and then makes them into stickers and washi tape and where's my washi tape washi tape really cool stuff um, so she's got all sorts of bumper stickers and regular stickers and they're all um, dishwasher safe and weatherproof and all of that um so she's just she's one of my favorites i love her she's fantastic when we used to do um what did we used to do in the good old days we used to do markets um a lot of times i ended up next to sarah and that was so much fun miss you sarah but she sent over bunches and bunches of stickers i was like sarah do you want to send a sticker for um this giveaway and she was like yes and then sent me like 40 not 40 but a whole bunch um so some of them are set aside with those other pouches into future giveaways but the ones that we're doing in this one she sent this one is meant to be a bumper sticker but it also fits across the top of your average laptop um create sarah um is not a knitter or a crocheter she is a an artist obviously um but she's also an art teacher by day um and she's really passionate about kindness and she has all these like be a nice human stickers and um a lot of other stuff that applies to makers um, in like a handmade community so even if you're not a knitter or crocheter she definitely has lots of stuff for you um, she's from Connecticut so that's why I have a Connecticut shirt but she also does like she's like a Boston and a Cape Cod series going on right now and then she has lots of cute like animal t-shirts I have many um, but yeah so this is her create sticker it's the same as the washi tape print but that's mine and she also sent by handmade make an artist happy you've probably seen me wear this shirt I have this on my water bottle she also does pins of this um, and it's got a lot of the same like maker tools around the edge so that is going in there and then at one point she pulled on Instagram for why reasons people create and then she made this sticker with all of these reasons in there because you have to it's your calling you have a message etc um, I have a hoodie with this print on it and then this we can make it one um, which is like a take on rosie the riveter and this is the one she sent me but i do want to say that she does have um i think four or five different skin tones in her shop as well 
which is really cool. I appreciate that inclusivity there. Um, I think this was the original and then she converted them. Like I said, she digitally colors them in. Um, so I have this as a, I think it's printed in all red, so it's not necessarily any race, um, but red stamp on a baseball tee, really cute. Um, but the stickers come in different skin tones. Um, and she also has another one that's just like the, the muscle. Um, and it's like five women with a muscle and different skin tones lined up and it says we can make it. So I really, I really like this one. This makes me really happy. Make her mama boss ladies, you know. So you're going to get that. So you got your four crafty block 21 bumper stickers, water bottle stickers. I have them all over my laptop. I have them on my planner. I have them on my wall. I, I really love Sarah. So that is the crafty Connecticut content, and then I grabbed a couple things from Hobby Lobby because I thought they were cute. Um, a couple of enamel pins. Mm, the glare on that. There you go. A couple of enamel pins because who doesn't want enamel pins? It says Yarn Life, Heart Yarn, and Yarn Enthusiast. I was trying to make sure I was getting knitter and crochet or things. So these are just I love yarn things. We all love yarn. And then this. Um, I wish there was something on the cover other than this blonde lady because that's not the most inclusive thing. Um, but it says yarn is a lifestyle and I just, I really like the inside of the notebook. Um, and you can always take your sticker and <laughs> cover it over if you don't like her. Um, but yeah, it's a really cute from Hobby Lobby. Again, if you want to get yourself one, I got it pretty recently, but it's a cute little yarn project notebook. So it's got like you color in your yarn weight and then you can put in the name and the washing instructions, additional notes, fiber content. And it's got a bunch, a bunch of pages of just these little fill in the, where's it focusing? I have to like peek over to tell. And then it's got a basket of yarn on the back, which I feel like would have been an appropriate cover, but whatever, I'm not in charge, I'll be lobby. So that is the 1K giveaway package. Um, I'm going to say it is open to anybody. I think, what is it, lower 48? Um, land mass 40, that's not how you say it. U.S. It's open to the U.S. Um, I will ship it to you. Um, cost on me if you are outside of the U.S. and you would like to enter, that is totally fine, but just please understand that we're going to have to discuss shipping because um, it's complicated there. So you're welcome to enter from anywhere, but I will cover shipping to the U.S. That's probably the easiest way of saying it. So if you want to be entered, again, um, be a subscriber, public subscriber. Um, and then leave me a comment down below. I want to know, not a super specific question, but tell me your favorite indie dyer, tell me your favorite yarn weight, or tell me your favorite yarn type. Just tell me something about you love about yarn. Favorite color yarn, favorite type of yarn, favorite dyer, favorite weight, something. Because um, I'm also looking to do a make-along um, eventually, um, revolving around some indie dyers, and we'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, tell me about your favorite yarn whatever that is to you um and yeah so if you subscribe and leave me a comment down below you will be entered and i will be announcing the winner in this podcast in on my podcast next episode so episode 18 um it's generally every other friday but if you're a subscriber and you have the notifications turned on you won't miss anything um but yeah be on the lookout for that uh and yeah, I don't think I'll have a way to contact you directly. So make sure you're watching episode 18 and I'll put it on the screen with your name and whatever and we'll get in touch with you. Thank you all for being here for that. I appreciate it. And I'm really excited to send that off to somebody because I like to give away things. Who doesn't want to win things? We like things. So that is the content for episode 17, right? Yeah, 17. The tea's almost gone, so I gotta wrap this up. Thank you guys for being here. Uh, again, I just, I'm so excited to see where this channel is going. I'm coming up on one year, end of October, beginning of November, something like that. Um, and it's really excited, exciting to see how it's grown and changed and excited to see where we go from here. So thank you for being part of my YouTube community and Instagram if you're over there, Bella's underscore, custom underscore crochets, all that. Thank you for being here with me. Um, especially this year, it's really nice to have um, community and people who get it. So I hope you have lots of yarn. I hope you're making lots of beautiful things. I hope you are choosing joy and keeping your fingers busy with the hooks.
and the needles or whatever it is you set your hands to. Thank you for being here. Until next time, make sure you are subscribed and have the notifications on so if you win, you don't miss out. See you in episode 18. <laughs> Thanks guys. Happy making. Bye.